In the previous video, I introduced you to a set of equations that we can use to describe the motion of an object which is either moving in a circle at a constant angular acceleration or rotating at a constant angular acceleration. So here's the idea. Let's say that we have an object here which is moving in a circle. Let's say that at some later time t1, the object is at angular position theta1 and moves with angular velocity omega1. Let's say at an earlier time t0, the angular position is theta0 and the angular velocity is omega0. The object moves with a constant angular acceleration alpha. This set of equations here relates the rotational kinematic variables at the later time to the rotational kinematic variables at the earlier time. Now we're going to solve a problem involving an object moving with a constant angular acceleration, or more precisely, with two different constant ang angular accelerations. To guide us through this problem, we're going to be using this procedure sheet here. This procedure sheet is available at the module introduction page. So let's look at the problem. We have a ceiling fan. So that's our ceiling fan. It begins rotating from rest with a constant angular acceleration of three radians per second per second. So it's gonna start from rest and start rotating faster and faster. Then five seconds after the ceiling fan began to rotate, it's going to lose power. And then over a 10 second time interval, the ceiling fan is gradually going to come to rest. And we want to know the total number of revolutions that the ceiling made during the process. So let's go to the handout and see what it tells us. So the first step is to identify the moments of interest and then draw sketches illustrating those moments of interest. Let's take this picture here to represent our first moment of interest. This would be where the fan starts to rotate. Now to give us some sense of those fan blades actually rotating round and around, I'm going to draw a picture of a little insect. And that little insect is going to always stay sitting on that same fan blade. So as the fan rotates around, we will see the insect changing position in the successive pictures. So anyway, we're going to start the insect off at the position of the reference line. So I'll put the reference line right here and the reference line will stay there. Our next moment of interest will be at the moment where the fan loses power. So this is just gonna be another picture of the ceiling fan with the fan blades and the insect in different positions. Let's say that the insect is over here now. But as I said, the reference line is gonna stay in place. So this would be where the fan loses power. And then the last moment of interest will be when the fan stops completely. And not, so this is just another picture of the ceiling fan, not super exciting. But let's say that I put the insect over here now. This would be when the fan stops. And I will put in the reference line once again. Step two of the problem says to draw a reference line, and I've already done that, and indicate the direction of positive rotation. So anytime we do a problem involving rotational kinematics, we always have to decide if we're going to take the positive direction of rotation to be clockwise or counterclockwise. And generally, unless there's a reason for doing otherwise, we will take the positive direction to be counterclockwise. And I indicate that by showing an arrow, which is hooking in the counterclockwise direction with a little plus sign. Step three, at each moment of interest, write in the appropriate kinematic variables. Normally this means writing down symbols to denote time, angle, and angular velocity. And then we write the angular acceleration off to the side. 
this part is going to look very much like what we were doing when we were solving kinematics problems with a constant linear acceleration. So let's say I go to that first moment of interest. We'll call this moment zero. So this will occur at time zero. We'll say the insect is at angular position theta zero and the angular velocity of the fan is omega zero. Over here where the fan loses power, let's say the time is T1. Let's say the angular position of the insect is theta one. Let's say the angular velocity of the fan is omega one. And then similarly, at the moment the fan stops, we'll have time two, theta two, omega two. Now we also want to put in the angular acceleration. There are actually two angular accelerations in this problem. So let's say that we have one angular acceleration as we go from zero to one, we can call that alpha zero one. And then we have a different constant angular acceleration as we go from moment one to two, let's call that alpha one two. At this point, I would invite you to pause the video and fill out whichever of these you are able to fill out without doing any computations and then rejoin the video. Okay, let's start with moment zero. Let's say that the whole process starts at time zero. At this moment, the insect is at the reference lines. We'll say the angle is zero and the fan is starting from rest. So let's say angular velocity zero. At the moment the fan loses power, the only thing we know without doing calculations is the time. So let's put in time equals five seconds. Now, what time did the fan stop? Well, the fan lost power at time five seconds. And after that, the fan was gradually slowing down for 10 seconds before it came to a complete stop. So this time over here would be 15 seconds. The other thing we know about this moment is that the fan has come to a stop. So the angular velocity would be zero. Now let's look at the angular accelerations. During the first five seconds where the angular velocity of the fan was increasing, we are told that the angular acceleration is three radians per second squared. So let's put that in. And during those last 10 seconds where the fan is getting slower, we are not told the angular acceleration. So we can leave that blank. I don't think we're gonna need that. Continuing with the handout, we have now gone through steps four. Now we go to step five, where we have to figure out which equations we're going to need to actually solve the problem. The problem is asking us to solve for the total number of revolutions during the entire process. In other words, we're being asked to solve for theta two. Now to solve for theta two, we're going to take these equations and change the subscripts so that we connect moment one to moment two. However, if you do that, you're going to see that every equation that has a theta two in it also has a theta one, and at the moment, theta one is unknown. So before we can solve the problem and get theta two, we first have to get theta one, and while we're at it, we might as well get omega one as well, because that might come in handy as we finish out the problem. So what I'd like you to do here is pause the video, Use the equations over here to get theta one and omega one. And once you've had a shot at that, rejoin the video. I'm going to start by using equation one here as written to get angular velocity omega one. So I'll just copy that over. Omega one equals omega zero plus alpha. Now I'm going from zero to one, so that would be alpha zero one. And the delta t, since I'm going from 0 to 1, would be t1 minus t0. Now, a couple of these things are 0. So zero those out and just substitute in the things which are not 0. We get omega 1 equals alpha 0, 1, 3 radians per second squared. t1 is 5 seconds. So omega one, the angular velocity at the moment the fan loses power is 15.0 radians per second. And I will put that into the figure. 
theta one I can get from equation two. So I'm just going to copy that over as written. So I have theta one equals theta zero plus omega zero delta t plus one half alpha delta t squared. Theta zero is zero, omega zero is zero. Substituting into here, uh, that should be alpha zero one. So substituting in, I have one half three radians per second squared. This would be the time interval from zero to one, which is five seconds quantity squared. So this is three times 25, which is 75. Half of that is 37.5. And radians per second squared times second squared is radians. So I can put that into the figure as well. The easiest way to get theta two involves an equation that I didn't give to you, which I'm now wishing that I did. So I'm gonna do this two ways. First, the easy way using the equation I didn't give you, and then I'll show you how you can use it just using these three equations here. So the equation that I didn't give you, but I'm now wishing I did, is the angular version of this equation here that you may remember from when we did linear kinematics. That one said delta x equals delta t times v0 plus v1 over 2. The rotational kinematic version of this, which I'm going to put over here, would be delta theta equals delta t times omega 0 plus omega 1 over 2. So if we use this, we could get to theta 2 pretty quickly. We would just have to take this equation and use it so that we connect moment 1 to moment 2. So that would give us theta 2 minus theta 1 equals delta t. Now, if we're connecting moment 1 to moment 2, that becomes t2 minus t1 times omega 2 plus omega 1 over 2. The only thing which is 0 here is omega 2, so we can just zero that out. And now we can solve for theta 2. So theta 2 would then be theta 1 plus t2 minus t1 times omega 1 over 2. So substituting, we have theta 2 equals theta 1, 37.5 radians, plus, OK, t2 minus t1 is 10 seconds, and then omega 1 over 2. That would be 15 radians per second over 2. And if you put that into your calculator, you'll get 112.5 radians. Now, the problem is asking us for the total number of revolutions of the fan. So we can convert radians to revolutions. A revolution is equal to 2 pi radians. So that gives us theta 2 equals 17.9 revolutions. So if we're just tracking the insect during that motion of the fan, the insect makes a total of 17.9 revolutions during the entire process. Now, just to be fair, I want to talk about how we can solve the problem not using equation 4, but just using those other three equations. Now, if we solve the problem just using the first three equations, what we would do first is get alpha 1, 2 using equation 1. Once we get alpha 1, 2 using equation 1, we could then get theta 2 using one of the other two equations, probably equation 3. So I'm going to go through that version of the solution now. So getting into that alternate solution now, I'm going to start by using equation 1, but I'm going to write it so as to connect moment 1 to moment 2, which means that equation 1 in this case becomes Omega 2 equals omega 1 plus here alpha 1, 2, and then delta t becomes t2 minus t1. So let's solve for alpha 1, 2 here. Omega 2 is 0, and I get alpha 1, 2 equals minus omega 1 
divided by T2 minus T1. So I have alpha 1, 2 equals minus 15 radians per second. And then T2 minus T1 is 10 seconds. That gives me alpha 1, 2 is minus 1.5 radians per second squared. So I can put that into the figure now. And now that I have alpha 1, 2, I can use equation 3 here, connecting moment 1 to moment 2, to finish out the problem and get theta 2. So taking that third equation, connecting moment 1 to moment 2, that becomes omega 2 squared equals omega 1 squared plus 2 alpha 1, 2 times theta 2 minus theta 1. Omega 2 is 0, so I'm solving for theta 2 here. So first, let me take omega 1 squared to the left, where it picks up a minus sign, divide by 2 alpha 1, 2. So I have all of this equals theta 2 minus theta 1. So then moving theta 1 to the other side. So I'm going to take theta 1, move it to the left, where it picks up a plus sign, but then switch sides. That gives me theta 2 equals plus theta 1 minus omega 1 squared over 2 alpha 1, 2. So if I do the substitutions now, hopefully I get something like that. Let's see. All right, I have 37.5 radians and then minus 15 radians per second quantity squared divided by 2. And then alpha 1, 2 was minus 1.5 radians per second squared. Okay, I again got 112.5 radians. And I can just write out the conversion again, a revolution over 2 pi radians, giving me 17.9 revolutions. Now we have done a rotational kinematics problem involving an object, which was first moving at one constant angular acceleration, and then moving at a different constant angular acceleration. These problems are pretty similar to problems we did earlier in the course involving objects moving with a constant regular acceleration along a straight line. And because of that, I'm not going to do any more example problems of this type. I hope one example problem helps you make the connection between what we did earlier and this topic. So what we're going to do in the next module is to start making connections between the rotational kinematic quantities that we've been studying in this module and the regular linear kinematic quantities that we have been studying since the beginning of the course.